November 2019, 640 light years away, a star. Such a star which light was dimming with each passing day. Scientists' eyes were glued to it. Only one question kept coming to their minds. Is this it? Is this the star's time? Can we witness this star's terrifying death? Yes, this is the most famous star, Betelgeuse. 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 And it's a tremendously energetic explosion. About which majority of scientists believe that it can explode at any time as a supernova. And supernova is one of the biggest explosions in the entire universe. A supernova is so rare that it happens only once or twice every 100 years in our galaxy. Now the question arises: was Betelgeuse really going to explode in 2019 or did it dimming indicate that it is at the end of its life? And does it pose any threat to our planet? If you think that supernovas does not pose any threat to us, then you have to go 36 million years back in the past. When our Earth witnessed a catastrophic disaster, because of this 75% of all living things died. And today we call this disaster the Angerberg event. The culprit behind this mass extinction, some scientists believe was indeed a supernova that happened some 65 light years away from Earth. Before looking at the complete story of Betelgeuse, do you know how easily you can see this star without a telescope with your naked eyes? What you have to do, just look to the east where our sun rises. Exactly there you will find this star. If you are looking for it in winter, it will appear a bit earlier around 9 pm while in summer it starts to appear a bit later. To identify Betelgeuse, there you will see a group of stars, which is the Orion constellation. If you look carefully, this group of stars resembles a human figure, a hunter-like figure. In one of its ends is a shield and in the other end is a weapon. And in the middle, where you are seeing these three stars, it is as if this hunter is wearing a belt. These three stars are actually the symbol of Orion constellation. And in the upper left side where you are seeing this star which is making its shoulder. This exactly is Betelgeuse, the most famous star in astronomy. You can very easily identify this star by its dark red color. In fact, this is the ninth brightest star in the sky. To understand this star well enough and to see what is so unique about this star, first we will look very briefly into the overall life of stars. That how stars live and how and why they die. If you watch this video, you will forever understand the real story that happens inside a star. The key point here is that the most important thing in a star is its mass. Mass simply means how much matter is in a star. It is in fact the mass that decides the all life cycle of a star. That how it will live and how it will die. Will it live for billions and even for trillions of years or will it die in just few million years? It is the mass that decides if a star dies silently or if it dies in a terrifying explosion. And after death, will it become a black hole or other strange object like a neutron star or white dwarf? All these things are decided by a star's mass. Now you must be thinking mass, we have learned about it in school, how something so basic impact the whole life cycle of a star. Well, to understand its importance, look at this theoretical scenario. 
Suppose the biggest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. If we increase its mass to some degree, to be exact, if we add the mass of 85 more Jupiters, the Jupiter will also become a star. Now you might be puzzled, how does increasing a planet's mass turn it into a star? You know, if you increase the mass of an object, its gravity will also increase. This fact was already explained by Isaac Newton 338 years ago. Now, what does an increase in gravity do? It compresses all the matter from all direction towards the planet's center even further. It's like if you put more and more load on a truck, its tires will have more pressure. In the same way, more mass means more gravity and more gravity means more temperature and pressure in a planet's core. This in return compresses the hydrogen atom in a star to get together and fuse. And this nuclear fusion produces enormous energy which turns a planet into a oat and glowing star. Now let's go back to Betelgeuse. Here look at this interesting fact. Betelgeuse has already lived almost its entire life. But its age is only 10 million years, which is significantly less than that of a typical star. In comparison, the age of our sun is 4.5 billion years, which is 450 times more than Betelgeuse. And our sun will live for another 4.5 billion years. So why there is so much difference in their life spans? To tell the truth, this difference is also because of their mass. You know, as the fuel of a star is the nuclear reaction in its core. So if a star is more massive, then because of gravity, the temperature and pressure in its core become more intense. That is why it will consume its fuel faster. In other words, it will fuse hydrogen into helium faster. And whenever the hydrogen in a star's core is almost completely fused, that is where the beginning of the end for a star starts. That is why the massive stars like Betelgeuse die in just few million years. And stars like our sun or smaller ones will live for billion and even for trillions of years and then they die silently. However, massive stars do not die silently. Whenever in their core hydrogen is turned into helium, a new story for a star begins and a new battle inside a star starts. A battle starts between gravity and the force of nuclear fusion. And in this battle, if a star is defeated, it will die in the biggest explosions in the entire universe, a supernova. The story of this battle starts with a star shifting into a new category. You know, a same star can shift from one category to another category of stars in its lifetime. A few million years ago, when Betelgeuse was fusing only one element, hydrogen, into helium, it was called a main sequence star. At that time, the battle between gravity and nuclear fusion was balanced. Meaning, on one side, gravity was trying to push the star from all directions, trying to collapse it on itself. On the other side, the force of nuclear reaction was countering the gravity and pushing the star outward, preventing it from collapsing on itself. In this way, the two forces balanced each other. In fact, a star spends 90% of its life in this balanced state. Which is why Betelgeuse was called a main sequence star. But now Betelgeuse has shifted from a main sequence star into a new category. By shifting in this category, the battle has officially begun. It happened when Betelgeuse converted almost all its hydrogen into helium. From there, it started to get out of balance. What happened next when hydrogen was exhausted? For some time, the nuclear fusion in the star's core also stopped. From there, gravity took the battle into its hands. 
As a result, all the layers of a star start collapsing on itself. Because of this collapse, the temperature inside the star's core reached 200 million degrees centigrade. Before the star collapsed completely on itself, this enormous temperature and pressure enabled Betelgeuse to fuse a new element, helium into carbon. Because of the fusion of this new element, once again a powerful force was generated inside the Betelgeuse, which pushed the Betelgeuse outward. But this time, this force is so intense that it pushed the layers of Betelgeuse much further outward. For this reason, Betelgeuse is now 140 times larger compared to when it was a main sequence star. And its color is red. The red color is due to the fact that its surface is much further away from its core and comparatively cooler than it was before. So now Betelgeuse is no more a main sequence star but a super red giant. So far we have learned that as long as a star fuses hydrogen into helium in its core it is called a main sequence star. But when hydrogen is exhausted and it is start to fuse other heavier elements and it become much larger than its original size then it is called a super red giant. If we look carefully, there are two interesting differences in these two phases of a star's life. Number one is that although a star spends 90% of its life as a main sequence star, but still in this phase it fuses only one element, hydrogen into helium. In contrast, in super red giant phase, a star fuses almost all other elements that exist in our universe, like oxygen in your lungs, carbon in your muscles, and iron in your blood. All these elements are made in a super red giant phase inside a star. Secondly, look at the time difference between these two phases. If in main sequence phase, hydrogen takes 10 million years to fuse into helium, in super red giant phase, helium takes only 1 million years to fuse into carbon, and carbon takes only 12,000 years to fuse into neon, and each successive element fuses in a shorter and shorter time span. If we look at the last element, silicon, it takes only 2 days to fuse into iron. And all these elements are byproduct of battle between gravity and nuclear fusion. Whenever gravity wins, causing the temperature and pressure to increase beyond previous levels, the star responds by fusing heavier and heavier elements, briefly preventing itself from collapse. But unfortunately, in reality, gravity is gradually winning this battle. In November 2019, scientists were thinking exactly the same thing that Betelgeuse is fusing the very last elements in its core. Because when a star transitions from fusing one heavy element to another, especially iron, during this transition, the nuclear fusion also stops. As a result, the star's brightness also decreases, which can be an indication of supernova. Now the question is, when exactly will Betelgeuse go supernova? Well, scientists are not exactly sure, but they believe that it is in the very last 1% of its lifespan. Technically, it will go supernova when the final element, silicon, fuses into iron. There, the game of a star will also end. Because iron acts like a poison for a star. It absorbs a star's energy but does not fuse further. For the last time when gravity wins and there is no nuclear fusion to stop it, the star collapses violently on itself. Due to this, the temperature in its core reaches a staggering 1 billion degree centigrade, leading to a terrifying explosion, a supernova. Do you know, during this explosion and in just few seconds, some of the rarest elements in our universe like gold and uranium also formed. 
It is said that this is how a massive star dies and here its story also ends. But interestingly, if a massive star like Betelgeuse dies, then in its core, the universe's most mysterious object, black hole, forms. So it may not be the story of the end of a star's life, but rather the beginning of the story of a black hole. A supernova is one of the most powerful events in the universe. But just how powerful is it? To imagine this, our sun produces just in one second the energy of 38 billion nuclear bombs. Yet a supernova produces 1 billion times more energy than our sun produces in its entire life. When supernova happens, it becomes brighter than billions of stars. And brightness of our entire galaxy pales in comparison. Such a terrifying explosion, if occurs even many light years away, could still destroy our planet. For Earth, the minimum safe distance is 160 light years. Even from this distance, it can still damage our ozone layer. And if supernova occurs as close as 100 light years, from this distance, it is not just a light show. In addition to seriously damaging the ozone layer, the powerful X-rays and gamma rays would alter the chemical composition of our atmosphere triggering climate change and possibly destroying the entire ecosystem. Destruction on Earth is certain if a supernova occurs just 25 light years away. Along with complete destruction of ozone layer, the powerful X-rays and gamma rays would be a death sentence for all living things on Earth. Some people may survive in underground bunkers, but on the surface of the Earth, no life would be possible for thousands of years. Now we have some idea of how powerful a supernova can be. And if we look at the history of supernovas, in all human history, only four supernovas were close enough to Earth that were visible during the day. The first such supernova, the record of which we find in Chinese, Japanese and Middle Eastern text was Supernova 1006, distance 7200 light years. The second was Supernova 1054, distance 6500 light years. The third was Supernova 1572, distance some 8500 light years away. And the last supernova, despite being 20,000 light years away, was still visible to the naked eye during the day, was supernova 1604. Johannes Kepler, the famous astronomer of that time, was observing this supernova for many days. He even published a book about it, titled D. Stella Nova, which means about a new star. He thought that it was the birth of a new star, but he didn't know that it was actually the death of a star. Now think about all the biggest supernovas that happened in our recorded history. All of them were thousands of light years away. In comparison, Betelgeuse is just 640 light years away. Yes, surely this is a safe distance, but still when Betelgeuse goes supernova, it would be a sight to be old, one that nobody could ignore because you would clearly see a star during the day and its brightness would be greater than the full moon. At night, its brightness would be so strong that you could see your shadow. And those animals which depend on moonlight to navigate would become confused and might not be able to navigate. And lastly, the Orion constellation, around which myths and legends have revolved for thousands of years, will lose his left shoulder forever from the sky. If you have learned something from this video, please subscribe this channel. I am Saif Shawani. Have a good time.